بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اجعلنا مما يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين uh, Brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, It's very nice to be here live streamed uh, to communicate with my brothers and sisters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for me uh, to not see the past few days because of uh, the situation that we're in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten the uplifting of this uh, coronavirus and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, protect our families, protect the Muslimin and protect the whole world from this virus. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first to end this pandemic inshallah and to make us from those who are patient in it. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, so this session is uh, directed towards the youth. Um, a lot of them have been reaching out to me and a lot of you guys have been reaching out to me uh, just talking about uh, what they're feeling, what you're feeling, um, the things that changed and how this changed impacted you, how it impacted your spirituality. Uh, not only are you not able to come to the masjid, but you're also not able to connect with your own friends. Uh, chill with your own friends the way you would do on a normal day um, and this is something I'm sure would really strike your faith or your iman uh, especially in a time like this times of uncertainty times when you don't know uh, what to think we have a lot of conspiracy theories going around some people are saying this thing is gonna last for a long time some people are saying oh it's just one week and then I'll go by and these times of uncertainty can cause us like anxiety uh, sometimes they can cause us uh, um, uh, it can make us sad in the inside but uh, what the purpose of this talk inshallah and this series that I'm going to start is to connect with you guys and that's what I want to do I want to connect with every single one of you out there for half a, half an hour every day from 4 to 4 30 inshallah today is called boys to men and then we're going to have another two sessions on Tuesdays and Thursdays called Reflections. I want you to tune in to both of them, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. So, to start off this lecture, inshallah, now, because we ate, ate up about 10 minutes of the lecture time, so it'll be about 20 minutes, inshallah ta'ala. It's called Boys to Men. It's this age that we, like all of us, or some of us are going through, uh, and I'm talking to the viewers right now, some of us went through, some of us are about to go through this phase, uh, we call it adolescence, and then there's a time called puberty, right there in the middle of this adolescence, that we start feeling changes in ourselves, in our emotions, in our mindset, the way we see things, our relationships with our families and this is exactly what I wanted to address with this uh, series so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his divine wisdom made us go through different stages and phases in our lives and this is by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first stage we begin with is the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Mu'minun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ طِينَ Allah created mankind from a lineage of what? Of teen. Of dirt. Of mud. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطُفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ Then, he began with what? With a single droplet. We all began from a single droplet. And that was our first phase. ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُّطُفَةَ عَلَقَ فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُضْغَةَ فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَةَ مُضْغَةَ فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُضْغَةَ عِظَامَ فَكَسَوْنَا الْعِظَامَ لَحْمَ And look at the phases here. The first is clay and then a single droplet. And then after the droplet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us into a clot and then into a piece of flesh and then from that piece of flesh created bones and then covered those bones with meat and then grew us to the babies that we were born into this life 
being. We were babies in the beginning, subhanAllah. And then we continue to grow. And we climb from one phase to another. First, we can't crawl, we can't walk, we can only breastfeed from our parent, from our mother. And then after we grow up a little, we start to crawl. And then we start to walk. And then we start discovering things. And then, subhanAllah, one thing at a time and one phase at a time, we begin to learn words, we begin to learn concepts, ideas, we are introduced to things. And then at a certain point, which is around like the age of 10, and that's the beginning of adolescence, we start to have this thing called tamyiz, what the ulama call tamyiz. We start uh, knowing what's good and what's bad based on our, our limited past experiences. And then after this phase of tamyiz, uh, we grow until we reach the age of puberty. And these are different milestones. Obviously the first milestone is when we have to pray. The Prophet Sallallahu he told us to order our kids to, play, uh, to pray at the age of seven. And then to emphasize on it strongly at the age of 10. So this is something that uh, we need to remember. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he told parents to tell the kids to pray at the age of seven, and then at the age of 10, that means that by the age of seven, the child should be able to understand what it means to connect to our Lord, what it means to worship God. And by the age of 10, if they don't get it, then we should even emphasize it like, more strongly so that, they, uh, so that they do pray and they do connect with their Lord. But in this age, the child still isn't required to pray, although we as parents are required to teach them, but the child isn't required to pray yet. And this is the beauty of it. So even if the child doesn't pray, would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hold them accountable for it? No, not until a certain age. And this is the age of puberty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, changes the person in this age. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا بَلَغَ الْأَطْفَالُ مِنْكُمْ الْحُلُمْ فَلْيَسْتَأْذِنُوا كَمَا اسْتَأْذَنَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ If the atfal, if the child gets to the age of puberty, then ah, things change. Instead of just entering into a room or a house, going into your aunt's house, going into your parents' room, it's not the same anymore. You have to ask for permission because now you're grown. Now you're older. Now you're responsible. Now you're accountable. And these are things that you have to, to know. As soon as you get to that age, everything transforms in, in, in your life, subhanAllah. So this is perhaps one of the most important times of your life. Your life, no matter how much you live, you live 70, 80, 90 years, 100 years, this is the most important time of your life. Why? The Prophet says in a hadith, that the pen has been lifted on three types of people. The pen has been lifted on three types of people. Meaning the pen of writing the actions, the good and the bad deeds. So the child doesn't really have uh, an angel writing what they're doing, whether it's good or bad. Do they get the ajr of doing good? Let, let's say they do umrah, for example, they do salah, of course they get the reward for it. But if they do something bad, do they get sin? No, not until the age of puberty. So, the qalam, this pen of writing their deeds has been lifted. For who? Only three people. The first, لِلنَّائِمْ حَتَّى يَسْتَيْقِذ The one who's asleep until they wake up. So somebody isn't held accountable for what they do uh, when they're sleepwalking. If they say something that's wrong when they're asleep, they aren't held accountable for it. And for a child until they get to the age of puberty, and And for someone who lost his mind, was insane, until they become sane. So some people have these uh, 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 times when they're out of their mind, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not 
write down what they do in this time if it's bad because their mind wasn't there at the time and this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but this is serious when you think about it it is a very big it's a huge transformation somebody who's only been introduced to this world say on average 15 years ago right so at 15 years old they reach the age of puberty and then what happens subhanallah all of a sudden everything just falls on top of their head they're required to do this Allah's writing their sins uh, they're they're required to lower their gaze they can't enter certain places anymore they can't see certain people anymore they they're required to do everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated a fully grown man and a fully grown woman subhanallah this age and this, this is a huge transformation but what makes it very challenging is that we're held accountable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment for things that we do in this stage of our life. We're still inexperienced. We still don't have knowledge. We still didn't see the world yet. Most of us, we've been in our parents' house. Maybe we've seen a few things here and there. We watched a few things here and there. Uh, we, we've seen some shows. We have some friends that told us their experiences. We learned a little from them. But did we really see the world? No, subhanAllah. But are we required to fulfill our duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, after the age of puberty. So it's a serious change. And it's, it's a very challenging for who? It's challenging for the youth who get to this age, and it's challenging for the parents. It's challenging for the youth because from their perspective, they see things as just you know, uh, they, they think they're children, they feel they're children, they think they can get away with things that they used to. They can say things that they used to, they can do things that they used to before they reach this age. And then all of a sudden, they're required to be treated like adults. And it's challenging for the parents as well, because the parents, subhanAllah, they, they still see them as that little kid that ran around. They used to change diapers for... They used to pacify, subhanAllah. And then all of a sudden, this kid has their own mindset, their own qana'at, their own beliefs. They challenge certain things. They challenge culture. They challenge things around them, education, systems, patterns. They have the ability to critique. And they can express themselves. And sometimes parents have a hard time adjusting to this. So parents should... Keep this in mind, that when a child gets to this age, the parent is responsible for them, but not really responsible for them in the sense that they're getting sin for what they do. No, what the parents did, they did their job before the age of puberty. The parents did everything they can to get them to this age so that they have the ability to understand uh, the harms that are around them by the time they get to it. And this is what it is. And this is what we, like every parent needs to understand. The child should be prepared. By the age of puberty, they should know. But the problem here is that the youth don't understand how much of a responsibility it is to be someone who crossed this threshold and moved to this new phase in their life. The Prophet وسلم, said in a hadith, لا تزول قدم ابن آدم يوم القيامة عند ربه حتى or من عند ربه حتى يسأل عن خمس that the person's foot will not move on the day of judgment from in front of their Lord until they're asked about five things. What are these five things? The first is عن عمره فيما أفنى His life and how he spent it. So this is all life. Understandable. Obviously on the Day of Judgment we're going to be asked about how we lived. The second is عن شبابه فيما أبلى The second is عن شبابه فيما أبلى Their youth and how they spent it. 
So first is life in general. And then the Prophet ﷺ just spe specified something. He said, no, but specifically the youth and how you spent your youth. And he said, ablah, meaning wasted it. And this is something, this is an ishara. This is a, the Prophet ﷺ wants us to understand something that this time of youth is either used wisely or it's wasted. And we'll talk about that a little later, inshaAllah ta'ala. The third is وَمَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنَ اكْتَسَبَهِ Their money and where, where they received it from, whether it was from halal means or haram means. The fourth is وَفِيمَا أَنْفَقَ And how they spent their money, whether it was فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ For the sake of Allah and good causes, in helping others, in helping themselves doing good or doing bad. And the fifth is وَمَاذَا عَمِلَ فِيمَا عَلِمْ And what did you do with what you knew? Did you act upon this knowledge? You come to the masjid, you attend lectures, you say, I listen to this shaykh, I listen to that shaykh. But what did you do with all this knowledge? Is any of it being implemented? A lot of times it isn't. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who implement the knowledge that they have. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So why did the Prophet ﷺ specify the age of shabab? It's because this is the age that we're filled with energy. We have a lot of energy. Zeal, we're looking at this world and we want to take it over. We want to know what's out there. We want to explore, we want to see, we want to discover. But there is a positive and there's a negative side to this age. So the positive is that we're very, we're, we're in close contact to our fitrah. So our fitrah uh, hasn't been skewed or altered with all of these false ideologies and, and all of these desires that are around us, these shahawat, these shubuhat that are floating around. Uh, we still haven't been exposed to it to a point where our fitrah, our natural disposition has been skewed. So because we're so close to the fitrah, it's easy to stay on it. So that's the positive aspect. But the negative aspect is that we make critical and big decisions in our life in this age or we try to or some of us try to when we still don't have knowledge and experience we don't have a lot of knowledge because you didn't have time to read or to know or to watch or to see and you didn't have that many experiences in your life how many people could you have possibly interacted with how many jobs could you have possibly had how many experiences you think you had at this age, the age of 15, 16, 17, 18. We think whatever experiences we had are suffice to make, a, to make a good judgment, but in reality they're not. We have a lot of energy, so it makes us make the wrong choices sometimes. So we have to be very wary. And inshallah later on I'm going to give advice in five different points as to how uh, we should, uh, what we should do and how we can take advantage of this age, inshallah ta'ala. So, is the reward big? Yes, it's big. And that's because the challenge is big as well. The Prophet wasallam he said in the hadith, seven people, سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ Seven people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shades in his shade. The shade of what? The shade of his throne subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shade us all in this. And this is specifically for the youth. The first one is Imamun Adil. Imamun Adil. A just leader, a just leader, that's, that's something big. We can understand why a just leader will be shaded with the shade of Allah on the Day of Judgment, on a day where there's no shade but His shade. But the next one, it really, it's really interesting. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ashab, someone who's young that grew up in obedience to Allah. So one had to run a whole country or a whole empire. And he gets the ajr of what being shaded with the shade of Allah, and the other, subhanAllah, gets what? Just a shab who grew up from the age of 10, let's say up until he became a young adult, but he grew up in obedience to Allah. He grew up in a masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return us to our masjid. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve us from, from this virus and, and the situation that we're in and reunite us uh, in our masajid. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So someone who grew up in the obedience of Allah. And it's very difficult. It's not easy. 
the road of Jannah was paved with hardship. The Prophet ﷺ said, حُفَّةِ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِهِ That the road to Jannah is hard, it's not easy. But once you, once you seek this path, and once you embark on this journey to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you that it will be easy. And that you will be content. And in your heart you will be pleased. But all you have to do is make that decision to start the journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and towards paradise. Are you going to do it today? That's your question. Are you going to do the five things that I'm going to ask you to do inshallah? In a little bit, we'll see when I mention them, inshallah. They're going to be very easy, implementable, and I'm sure, I'm sure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist you in fulfilling your rights towards Him, inshallah ta'ala. Some of the ulama said that this age was emphasized in the previous ahadith because we have the two things that a lot of people that pass this age don't really have. The Prophet ﷺ said, نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا إِبْنُ آدَمٌ There are two ni'mas, two blessings that we really don't appreciate until we lose. He said, الصِّحَّةِ وَالْفَرَاغِ Health and free time. And the peak of health and free time is at this age because we don't really have responsibilities. We don't need to spend on a family. We don't need to have a full-time job. You know, we have to study for school, but it's nothing compared to the responsibilities we're going to have the rest of our life. So we have this free time, and now we have a lot of it because we're sitting at home. A lot of the universities, the schools, all shifted to online schooling. So subhanAllah, we have a lot of free time now. We get our stuff done, and then, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to sit there on, on Snap, on Instagram, TikTok? Uh, am I just going to watch videos on YouTube all day, things that don't benefit me in any way? Or am I going to fill my time with something uh, productive, something that develops me, something that gets me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's what you have to ask yourself. So now the big question is, how do I take advantage of this age? All right, we heard that it's an important age. We know we have to take advantage of it, but how do I do that? Okay, so these are the five points. If you want to write them down, you can, inshallah. The first is to make the choices that you make in this age based on proofs and evidence. Based on proofs and evidence. From the Qur'an, from the Sunnah, from the Aqil, from the Ijma' what you see is what's commonly known as good is good. The Prophet ﷺ said this, وَمَا رَآهُ النَّاسِ حَسَنْ فَهُوَ حَسَنْ وَمَا رَآهُ النَّاسِ قَبِيحْ فَهُوَ قَبِيحْ What the people see is good is good, what the people see is bad is bad. So, so this is something that you can use uh, as well. And I'm talking about good people, not bad people by the way. So the second is taming your inner desires. Oh, the lights are back on, alhamdulillah. Good. So taming your inner desires. Every single one of us has, like, we're filled with these desires that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us with. But that's why the reward is huge. It's because the desires that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed in us, the problems that we go through, our, our mind is developing, our emotions are developing, our... our, our Psyches, everything's growing, subhanAllah. So we need to tame these desires that arise from this as a result of this growth. Number three is choosing good friends. Having good people around you. Do these people help me get closer to Allah? Are these people assisting me in, 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 in accomplishing my goals in life? Do I see myself successful? talking or associating with this person? Or do I see myself as a failure, a drug addict, an alcoholic, uh, someone who just wastes their time and does nothing? Because look, we, you might not be doing haram with a friend, right? Maybe you're doing everything, alhamdulillah, halal, you're just playing video games, you're chum, but some people just waste your time. You weren't made for this, and this is something you have to think of. You weren't made just to kill your time. Uh, the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا Do you think we just created you for nothing, for no purpose. وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ And that you will never return to Allah? No. Of course, you, of course not. You're going to return to Allah. You're going to stand in front of Allah. Your actions are, are something you're held accountable for. Once you reach this age, you're going to be held accountable for everything you do. Number four is seeking advice 
from people of knowledge and experience. Ask people of knowledge. Study with a scholar, be close to a scholar, have someone who you're in constant contact with. Alhamdulillah, in the community, we have plenty of mashayikh, plenty of asatidha. Uh, you can reach out to them, have a close connection with them, ask them. Maybe what you're feeling is something you can overcome in no time. All you needed to do is ask a question. But some people keep delaying it. No, they won't know. No, it, you're not going to know until you try. Give it a try, ask them. They might tell you something that'll change your whole life. Just reach out. And that's, that's the fourth point, inshallah. Number five is don't waste your time. You have a lot of time right now. You have a lot of time. We're at home. We're quarantined. Coronavirus is all over the place. And most likely we're going to be quarantined even more right now. We can't get, you know, they don't recommend, recommend gatherings of more than 10. But later on, they might just say stay home. Okay, if we stay home, what do we do? Set a goal for yourself. If you always wanted to memorize the Qur'an, do it now. Make a schedule, reach out to people who did it before, people who, ha who memorize the Qur'an, who have a technique that you can benefit from, and start it right now. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you do it, and will assist you. The second uh, is if you, want, if you wanted to read books, if you like to read, and you never had time to read, now is your time to read. If you want to start a project, you wanted to do something hands-on, arts and crafts, go to Home Depot now before it closes down. Go to Lowe's or something. Get all the materials you want and start a project that you always wanted to do that you never had time to do. Start it right now. Do it. Get your hands dirty. Get into something. If you don't have a hobby, have a good hobby for yourself. Develop, find what you're good at. Every single one of us is good at something. Wallahi. Every single one of us is good at something. You just have to find it. You gotta keep trying things until you say, hey, wow, you know, I'm catching on to this much quicker than anything else. So subhanAllah, find that thing. This is your time. This is your chance. Don't waste it on videos. Don't waste it uh, on other people's successes. Don't just be a like for someone else. Don't be a hit for someone else. People, YouTubers, Instagrammers, whatever, they're making money on you. Do you only want to be that? Or do you want to be the one who's successful? Start a project, record yourself, drop it, open a YouTube channel, benefit others, inspire others. If you memorize the Qur'an, tell others how you use this time wisely. But don't let it stop at you. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is the last hadith. He said, اختنم خمسن قبل خمسن. He said, take advantage of five before five. شبابك قبل هرمك. Your shabab, your youth before you grow old. The second is, صحتك قبل سقمك. Your health before you get sick. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. protect us all from sickness. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And number three, غناك قبل فقرك, قبل فقرك And your ghina, قبل الفقر, before you become poor. Your wealth before you become poor. And the fourth is, وفراغك قبل شغلك And your free time before you become busy again. Before things open and you say, oh, I don't have the time to do this. Now is your time, brothers and sisters. So please use it wisely. And the last but not least, وَحَيَاتِكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ And your life before your death. Because reality is, we're all going to die. There's one thing we're certain, death has no religion. Whether you believe in Allah or in a religion or in whatever you want to believe in, we're all going to die. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge us for everything after we die we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on us and to have forgiveness on us on the day of judgment we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect to protect our families to protect our children our siblings our parents our grandparents from coronavirus and from all sicknesses we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our last words in this dunya, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, have mercy on us, and show us the straight path, and to assist us in applying these five different things. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. I'll see you tomorrow, inshallah, four o'clock. Do not forget. Wassalamu